On today's show, we will break down the latest Mel Kuyper NFL Draft Big Board. Changes continue. I would even argue changes that maybe shouldn't be happening at this stage of the process for someone like Mel, but hey, take advantage of the time you have as new information becomes available. First up, no change here at number one overall. Caleb Williams out of USC is still Mel's top guy. That hasn't really changed at all and should go number one uh, to the Bears in this year's class. A change at number two. It's now Jaden Daniels, which I find interesting. Um, up a spot, by the way, uh, for Daniels for, you know, he did this post-combine too. Pro day changing his mind, I guess. I don't, I don't, I don't really know uh, from that perspective. I like Daniels. I, even ignoring the, the quarterback boost, I can't put him two. Number two quarterback, sure. I don't even think he's the best player from his college team this year. More on that in a little bit. But where do you rake Jaden Daniels among quarterback prospects in this class? Is he one? Is he two? Is he three? Four or five even? Sound off for me in the comment section right now. Number three, down a spot is Marvin Harrison Jr. He's my number one guy. Like I just, I, I'm not going to overthink it because he didn't do his pro day because he focused on being in game shape. Like I think that's actually probably a better thing long term. Like skipped his podium session. Oh no! Like I'm not. It doesn't really bother me. I don't think it bothers NFL teams. Uh, City Tips Pro Day, his team said, ah, you don't, you don't need to worry about him. Like, you're good. We have everything you need there. I do love, by the way, Malik Neighbors. I have not stacked my board. I do know where he's going to be. He's going to be number two overall. I have Marvin Harrison over him still, and I know there are teams that think Neighbors is even better, but I do love what he offers. Now, originally, Mel had Roma Dunze over Malik Neighbors. That is now flipped, so... Again, why are things changing? And did that late in April, I'm not totally sure when you should have all your information, but it's, it's fine. You know, people change their mind. And frankly, Mel gets in info from NFL teams as well. Uh, Adunze is probably going to be around in the top five player for me as well. All three of those guys, Harrison, Neighbors, and Rome, those guys could easily be the top receiver in almost any given class. They are that impressive. Brock Bowers, number six. I doubt he goes top six. Um... But I am intrigued in terms of how far he falls. There really wasn't testing done. Might raise some red flags there. Did, was he not going to test well? Was he still a bit banged up? I don't know. Drake May stays there at number seven overall. Now, I, I have May over Jaden Daniels. We're still talking about a top 10 graded quarterback. So, you know, at a certain point, a lot of these become flavors of ice cream in the sense of, are you a vanilla guy? Do you like chocolate chip? Oh, are you a peanut butter chip guy? Black raspberry chip? It's all good. It's a matter of what do you prefer more. Number eight is Joe Alt. Honestly, it feels low for me. You know, Alt will crack my top five. The, he took the step forward we wanted to. He still hasn't even played that much offensive line, by the way. He kind of didn't do it until late in his high school career, despite his dad being an, a first-round offensive tackle. He played other, other spots. Uh, massive human who moves incredibly well in general the large human who moves well and played well pretty pretty standard and safe eval now no wrong answer here who is your favorite 2024 nfl draft prospect drop that player name for me in the comment section right now troy fatanu out of washington is the number nine player for mel oh, look i will give mel credit here he has been high on him for a while. Bumped him back into his top 10, by the way. He, he plays, I think, tackle or guard is very impressive. I have a later first round get on, but I'll give Mel credit. He was one of the first guys super, super high on, on him coming out of Washington. Finally, a defensive player. It's Dallas Turner at number 10 overall. Uh, the athletic ability is crazy impressive. You know, it's top 10, top 15. Wouldn't be surprised if he was the first defensive player taken. Number 11, Brian Thomas Jr., by the way. And this is also why I think you have to asterisk, like, is Jaden Daniels top 10 when he's got, he had two top 12 receivers, plus a guy next year that's going to be really good too? The answer is still probably, yeah, he's still probably a top 10 player, but two gets me a bit anxious there. Thomas is the height, weight, speed freak. 
And those guys tend to go pretty early. J.C. Latham is kind of one of the wild cards in the top 15 of, the, of this year's actual draft. He's 12 overall for Mel. You know, he didn't, he didn't test at all. And it's not like he's a locked top five pick like Marvin Harrison is. So why didn't he test? Just makes me wonder if he wasn't going to test that great. And is he a tackle or a guard in the NFL? Top 25 player for me too. But they're, they're, I, I have some concerns there. The concerns for Liatu Latu are kind of straightforward. Medical. <laughs> like, you know, that's... Does the medical check out? Very talented, disruptive player, impactful, but he was medically retired by Washington. So does he stay healthy? Uh, Mel bumped him from 20 to 13 in his update. Maybe that means the medical came back good? I'm not sure. J.J. McCarthy, number 14 overall here. Um, the coaching staffs are going to love him. He's going to wow them with him. It's why Jim Harbaugh keeps having every chance he gets because the coaching staffs will, will love him. I see a lot of, you know, give him a B grade in his game. Accuracy, mobility, arm strength, some processing stuff. But he wasn't asked to do a lot in the Michigan offense. Can he? I think so. But it's not as a clean eval. There's more projection there than some of the other top prospects this year. I have a second round grade on McCarthy. I think this is quarterback inflation. I do think he'll go in the top half of round one, by the way. So who will draft J.J. McCarthy? Drop that player name, for, or the team name, I should say, in the comments section. Number one corner for Mel is Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. Uh, he had a really good year for the Rockets. I, I've seen a lot of good stuff. He has been a, a massive pre-draft winner as well. Olu Fashinu out of Penn State here, who was 18, now back to 16. The consensus boards, quote-unquote, they've, they've dropped him. I don't really know why. He's a great pass protector. Yeah, he could use some work as a, as a, as a run blocker, but he's 20... He turned 21 in December. He's super young with great athletic ability. I, I, he's going to be a top, top 15 player easy for me. Xavier Worthy's now 17. Now, he was 14 at one point after the massive combine boost, and I wonder if Mel will eventually kind of course correct there and, and push him further down. Uh, there are Hollywood vibes or Hollywood Brown vibes there too. He's skinny though. Like, yeah, like, even if he plays like a 175, that, not, that's kind of an outlier size there uh, that will raise concerns. But you literally cannot coach that speed at all. Now, today's show is made possible by game time. I wait to last minute for tickets. You know, I've, got, I've got hockey tickets coming up this week. I didn't buy them until the, the, the last second, you know, the, the week of, because I don't have time to plan things out the way I maybe should. But game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to the sports, music, comedy, theater events, and more near you. The game time guarantee, fantastic offer here. You means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. You can also see the view from your seat, and it's kind of like a live photo. Take your phone and kind of move it around, left, up, down, right, etc., and you'll actually have a good feel for what your seat is as opposed to, you know, just the, the map version of it, you know? So download the Game Time app, create your account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms to apply, but again, create your account, redeem code CHATSPORTS for $20 off the link, GameTime.co, and the promo code, chat sports will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. Download game time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Number 18, Talise Fuaga out of Oregon State. I think he'd be, I think he'd be a top-10 pick. I have him over, over Latham myself. Number 19, Terion Arnold out of Alabama, who been a bit higher at points on, on previous boards for Mel, but I think fringe top 20 is, is about where he's going to be on my board. Same with Jared Verse. 
Uh, Pry would have been about a top 20 pick had he turned pro last year. Was a little bit inconsistent for me this year. Um, really got going late in the year, but was also MIA a little bit too free. That's why he's not a, a top 10 player for me in this year's class. Cooper DeJean out of Iowa. I, I, I just wonder if, if he can hold up in man. He played a ton of zone at Iowa, was pretty good at it. I think he's a little bit more of a straight line athlete than he is the fluid one, but he's a fantastic uh, tackler as well. He should go in the first round. Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma at number 22 overall, I think does have the traits to go play on the left side of the offensive line, but he's, he's raw. Yeah, I, I think he needs, no sacks allowed, but the run blocking, the technique stuff needs some development. I think he does go mid to late round one. I'm probably a little bit higher, Mel is, than me on him, but not, I'm talking like maybe 10 spots, somewhere in that range. Nate Wiggins is number 23. Look, he's skinny, but he's fast and he is smooth in coverage. And those two things tend to go pretty damn well for you. Byron Murphy out of Texas. I might be a touch higher on, on Murphy ranking-wise, but probably similar grades here. Um, not the biggest defensive tackle, but held up well against the run and was very disruptive. That is a good thing. And then a new entry for the first time, TJ Tampa suddenly jumps into Mel's top 25 out of Iowa State. Does that mean Mel heard something and said, you know, you've got to put TJ Tampa up higher? Sometimes Mel does this, and then he course corrects in his, in his next update. So I am very curious where Tampa finishes on Mel's final big board. Uh, he played well at Iowa State. Um, there are some issues, hamstring injuries coming back from there, but I, I think the size, the traits are all pretty impressive. But no one else has Tampa in his top 25, in their top 25, at least that I've seen. I'm sure somebody does. I'm curious how that all plays out going forward. So it's only 25 players. Guys got left off that board. Who did Mel Kuyper leave off of his NFL draft big board? Drop that player name for me in the comment section right now. Some notable guys not on this list. A.D. Mitchell, you will have some teams who like him more than Z, really because he's bigger, also super athletic. Amarius Mims, I will risk it all for him. I like him more than Guyton. He played better. Now, he's played fewer snaps but he's less raw, more just inexperienced. Jackson Powers Johnson, Mel doesn't like centers. He's never liked them. He never puts them high, high on his list. There are some medical concerns, though, for JPJ. I don't really know why Johnny Newton's fallen. He played great for, I, for Illinois and went from like, yeah, first-round pick to, ah, forget about him. I don't really get it. It's very, very weird to me. Cloyd McKinstry might slide because of that, that uh, Jones fracture in his foot, but did answer some, some pro day concerns with his, with his 40 yard dash time, by the way.